Deadpool is more insane than people who use Android phones. But in an instant, Deadpool can't flip a switch and be a good guy or a bad guy. And when he's a good guy, he's basically more powerful than a bidet. But when he's bad, he's more heinous than Ezra Miller's fashion sense. And we're going to see Deadpool blaze through the Marvel world in the Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe comic series. So this hentai begins with a nematode known as the Watcher, who's basically telling the readers that every world in this universe has to come to an end. But some worlds may end happily with bubbles and flowers, while others may end with more pain than falling off the track in Mario Kart. And this world is no different because the entire Marvel Universe is going to meet its demise, starting off with the Fantastic Four and Mr. Fantastic stretching across the room like spaghetti and telling Sue to run away and stay safe. But Sue couldn't just leave Reed, especially their kids, but even her kids have gone to the Shadow Realm because Reed sent them to the negative zone to stay safe, but the portal was destroyed by a pool of death, and now they are gone, and unfortunately, Reed is too. So Sue went ahead to do some investigating and eventually opened the doors to a new galaxy that has bursted into flames and with Johnny Storm completely beaten up all thanks to Deadpool who grabs Johnny by the hair follicles and slices the scuba so hard, red nail polish splashes onto Sue's face. And this was enough for Deadpool to see her and strike. But she was thinking fast, because she popped his head like a zip, but also made a decision that is more stupid than telling your parents that you want to have dessert for dinner, which was turn her back on a donkey that could heal, because Wade just got up and killed her like a housefly, and then basically killed the entire Fantastic Four. But meanwhile, the hairless sack of nuts came back to give us a little origin story on Deadpool's herpes episode. And it all started in a mental hospital, with Deadpool being rolled by the X-Men and being chucked into an office with a therapist. But this man was a lot more than a therapist. This meat sludge was actually Psycho Man, and he was here to torture Deadpool and brainwash him to become one of his lackeys. Because similar to other virgins like him, he wants to take over the world, but he needs an army. So he's going to brainwash other people to do the work for him. But apparently, this brainwashing gave Deadpool a voice, and that voice was this red box. Which has to be the strongest superpower out there, because this is where Deadpool's heirs tour begin. Because he gets a chokehold on Psycho Man, pulls his head back to open a machine, which allows the real Psycho man to come out, but it turns out that he's more puny than an ant, so Deadpool slams the scuba like a sticker and kills him. But Redbox here tells him that the job is not done. So when he gets out of the prison, he starts setting the entire place on fire and turning it into Bowser's castle, and once he renovates the place with flames, he vows to take down the entire Marvel Universe because he feels like that's his purpose. Anywho, we're taken back to the Fantastic Butt Plugs headquarters with the Watcher talking to us and committing the same sin Sue made, which was turn his back on Wade, because this man got shot by Deadpool with a cosmic gun, and followed this up by asking the Watcher who he was talking to. So he points it to you, sitting down, probably procrastinating your homework, and puts you on his hit list, followed by killing the Watcher and moving on to his next victim. Or should I say victims? Because this venomous snake is stabbing more people than a porcupine? Because he burned the Ghost Rider, electrocuted Doctor Doom, cooked Howard the Duck, and is now having a little tango with spider butts. But it looks like Peter has the upper hand, because he sent Deadpool diving to the ground and splatooned all over the floor. But Peter couldn't stop there. He needed to do, well, something to Wade. But it looks like he took too long to think, because Deadpool whips out Spider-Man's greatest weakness, a weakness that is so out of nowhere, it's more shocking than a four-day school week, and that weakness was a gun. So he blasted him in the chin and killed Spider-Man like a bug. And this killing was so monumental, it caught the attention of the Avengers, or at least what's left of the Avengers, because they're really putting their nuts together and trying to think about how to take down Deadpool for good. But all of a sudden, Jarvis bolts into the room like he found the cure to veganism and tells Stark that Ant-Man is gone and there are no pin particles in his lab. And this made Wolverine figure out who Wade's next target is, and it turned out to be the Avengers because Wade enlarged an army's worth of explosives blew up the Avengers and killed everyone in a second. But he doesn't have time to celebrate because Luke Cage with his unbreakable skin is going strong and was ready to snap Wade in two. But Einstein over here told Luke that the coffee that he's been drinking during the meeting, yeah, he spiked it and now he's dead. But this quack has to deal with Thor now. But that's fine because Deadpool sprinkled some pin particles on his hammer so that way, when it goes back to Thor, it could give him a harder smooch than your grandmother gives to you. And after that, he had a little chat with Redbox and asked if what he was doing had a purpose. And Redbox explains that it does because everyone here was controlled. They were just puppets in this Sidemen Sunday, and killing them is basically mercy for them. But he should stop talking to himself like a goober, because Hulk is here to rip him apart like paper, but then when he's done, he turns his back on a dead Deadpool, climbs into a cave, and turns into Bruce Banner, not only so he could sleep, but give Wade an opportunity while he's down to kill him. So clearly this is getting bad. So the loved ones of all the fallen heroes got together and put together all their valuables and gave it all to one person, and in exchange, he would kill Deadpool. And that one Skylander was Taskmaster, and he was ready to rock and sock and kill Deadpool. But he better move fast because people are dying left, right, and center, and Deadpool's next big target is the X-Men, but more specifically Professor X, because he has him kidnapped and just wants him to do one thing to him, and not say some magic word, and apparently after he said this, all the X-Men thought that this was a good sign, but it turns out it just activated a rubber ball that caused Cyclops to suffocate, make him laser up, and kill everyone, and this also helped Colossus, who's holding a door but got electrocuted and died as well, and Professor X hated this more than watching cuties, but Redbox told Wade that Xavier wanted to be vulnerable, but more specifically he wanted to 
to get inside his head. So why don't you let him give it a try? So he tries pushing him and trauma dumping Humpty Dumpty over here and telling him that there was a voice in his head that Wade wasn't willing to listen to. And it turns out it was the fourth wall, the wall that has been crushing him and all these characters in a 2D fictitious existence. So after listening to this diss track, Xavier had enough and tried to break his mind, but it turns out that there was so much going on inside Deadpool's head that it broke him and caused him to fail the spicy noodle challenge. So after killing Xavier, he turned Magneto into a decaying apple and made Kitty Pride run around in a hamster wheel. But these Olympic games were not over yet, especially if Wolverine was competing, because after seeing X-23 and Dakin's hanging corpses, it was time for a healing factor v healing factor tango. But it looks like this will end faster than you could say Billy Bob, because Deadpool whipped out the mighty Carbonadium Sword, which is the only thing that is capable of disabling Logan's healing factor. And disabled he did, because after he stabbed Logan, he was more dead than a duck. But anywho, we go back to see what Taskmaster is doing, and right now he's in Doctor Strange's music studio and looking through the books on the floor because it looked like Deadpool was looking for something. And it turns out, it was a magical book about how to access the nexus of realities. And obviously, this wasn't good. But that's irrelevant right now because almost every hero and villain isn't only fighting themselves, but they are also falling from the sky because they are lining up to end themselves like someone playing Valorant. And the Punisher was seeing this all go down and saw Deadpool from afar doing some tinkering. So he took his gun and killed him, but it turns out, when he went to go see Deadpool, he saw that it was just a random villain named the Puppet Master, who was toying with a bunch of voodoo dolls and killing the Marvel heroes. But again, for the 79th time, this donkey turns his back on Deadpool, because Wade also had his own voodoo doll of Frank and ended Frank then and there as well. And now at this point, the writers are just having fun. This story is going tits up, because there are not enough pages to tell this story, because Silver Surfer, Thanos, and even Galactus have died. But anyways, Taskmaster is still trying to find Wade, and he finally does in this swamp. And after that, this started an epic and crazy battle, because these bucks were going toe-to-toe, -to -toe and they were pretty evenly skilled, because no matter what happened, like Taskmaster losing his sword, they were somehow able to always get back up and fight. But here's the thing, I'm sure you tomatoes know that Taskmaster's power is the ability to mimic others when they are fighting. So Deadpool tried to push that skill to the test and asked Taskmaster to predict his next move. And this made him freeze like ice, because for some reason, he couldn't make a prediction, which led to Man-Thing sprouting, clobbering, and killing this malnourished emo kid. But not only that, Man-Thing also sacrificed himself and opened a portal for Deadpool to enter through, escape the Marvel Universe, look through every other world out there, and end up in the real world. And when I mean the real world, I mean Marvel Comics headquarters, where a bunch of goobers are currently writing the Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe comic, and are also all soon going to die. But don't worry, he's looking at you next, and he's going to come. And yeah, that's it. Bye.